All right, guys, welcome to this video today. This one is going to be prompted by a conversation I had with a guy I was doing some coaching with before, and he expressed to me that he always has this nagging feeling that no matter what he achieves and whatever he accomplishes, how much he improves himself, he always feels like he's very behind and that he should be further ahead for the age that he is. Now, I think it's safe to say that we've all experienced this at some point in our lives. It's very easy to compare ourselves to people, especially if you're somebody that I imagine you will be watching this channel who's driven to succeed and better themselves. And there's multiple levels I want to explore this on, but one of the most obvious ones that comes to mind straight away is because now we've got access to social media and we can peer into everybody's lives and see all these people that before the invention of something like Instagram, you'd have had no idea existed. And if you think about when we used to live in small towns and villages, the most successful person you knew might be somebody that owned like the woodcutting company or something like that. Whereas now we can see teenagers earning millions of dollars streaming video games. and so so, you know, it's very easy to compare ourselves to that and our natural biology just hasn't caught up with the technological advancements. And you've probably heard before, you know, people say that social media is a double-edged sword because if you can use that to become inspired and do something for yourself and strive to be better, then that's great. But there's a lot of people that see that stuff and kind of like retire from life and they just feel so demoralized that they don't even try to do something. So you need to really be aware of your mindset when you're looking at that stuff. So to start at a very foundational level, the big problem with that guy's statement of feeling like he was behind and stuff is he's operating from a state of feeling not good enough when you're operating from that state because that's your like foundation a way to think about this is kind of like a pair of colored glasses that you put on everything in your world is going to be colored by those glasses and that's the sort of lens that you're going to filter everything through and you can't outthink your current self-image and so when you're operating from that state of not being good enough then none of the outward actions by default can ever remedy that because again that that genesis point from where everything's coming from is flawed. And you might have been operating this way for a long time and you're so kind of used to that now that you don't know anything different. And this is what I'm always trying to explain is that when you're under the influence of the ego, there's always a new level, there's always a new rabbit to catch. And you have to realize that nothing you can do is ever gonna satisfy that hunger. And a great description of the ego is it's like water that you drink and it makes you thirsty. You can imagine being really thirsty and you drink the water finally and you're like, oh, I'm satisfied and stuff. But then as soon as you take the glass away from your mouth, you're like, oh, you know, you need to drink water again. And the way we need to look at this stuff is like these things you know this thought of not being good enough and all that these are just thoughts and they just come to us and we can't control it and it's not the thoughts that are the problem but the identification with the thoughts a way that I always like to think about this is have you ever been driving and you just get a random thought pop into your head that I could just pull into oncoming traffic and cause a huge accident you don't take that seriously because you're just like where the hell did that come from it's such a strange thought and because you're not identified with it you just let it go. Whereas like when a thought comes in about something like you look around and you see people doing better than you, we take those much more seriously because we believe they're more related to the importance of us achieving something. And once again, I can predict that some people hearing that now will be thinking, oh, but if I don't have these thoughts, like how am I gonna do anything? Where's my drive gonna come from? I would never ever say to discount your achievements and try to be desireless. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm advocating for what's called emotional intelligence, which is understanding how your mind operates and the different levels of our personalities so we can make much more informed decisions. The really important thing you've got to do firstly is to understand that you have an ego and it's got its own agenda that's separate to what you think it is. And that's the, the starting point because a lot of people just operate without even any awareness that there's sort of a true self and an egoic personality that's operating regardless of that. But you've got to understand that the ego's game is literally to survive and it will do anything it can to hook you in because it sort of feeds on your energy. And it's a bit like a marketer in that sense. You know, there's a phrase in marketing, kick the bruised knee, which means when you're trying to sort of get your prospects interested in your product, you agitate their pain points. And that's kind of what the ego is doing in a sense, is it uses things that are very personal to you and it knows they're gonna hook your attention and trigger your emotions to get you to buy into them. But this is where you have to intervene and be very present and aware of what's happening so you don't just go off and become reactionary like an animal. And this probably seems a bit radical, but what I advocate for is just essentially disconnecting from your thoughts entirely so that you can choose and have some space between making certain decisions and what's gonna be best for you rather than, again, just being reactionary. And this is a much deeper level of personal development that's much more foundational at its core because a lot of that stuff 
stuff, especially the mainstream stuff, is essentially just playing with shadows. It's not really the origin of where anything comes from. You're just kind of creating this character, but it's very under threat all the time and it's still operating from a sense of scarcity and lack. What relies upon it operating effectively is you adhering to everything that it wants from you in a sense. So it's kind of like a master that you're having to please all the time. That's all well and good when you're operating well and getting things done, but we've seen so many people who they've got all of these personal development behaviors in place and one day they're not allowed to do them or they relapse into something that they thought they'd overcome and their whole world falls apart because if you're unhappy with how your life's going or you've got vices and coping mechanisms the reason you have them is because you're in a dysfunctional way looking to fill some void within you through these substances that kind of make you feel good or whatever your chosen vice is and just adding some new self-improvement behavior isn't going to make that original you know, paying that void go away. It's like if your car's running low on gas, you just think that sticking a smiley face sticker over the gauge is going to make the problem go away. No one is really talking about addressing why we even want to do those negative things in the first place. All the advice seems to be that I come across is start reading and do nofap and all this stuff. And it's like, yes, those things are of course very good, but I think we need to understand that they're not going to solve that inner thing within us that was driving us to do the negative behaviors in the first place. And this is why I always like to explore at this deeper level because I think it's much more fundamental and I think this is getting towards true fundamental change not just surface level stuff like adding a few new behaviors so to address the topic of this video which would be how to feel better about you know feeling behind in life and like you're not accomplishing things you might expect some surface level thing from me about like a technique in order to feel better but for me to do that would be disingenuous and there certainly are things you can do but I see those as just almost like moving around pawns on a chessboard whereas what I advocate for is to just stop playing chess entirely and and to radically shift the way we view what we essentially are because there is actually something that is true about what we are but it's probably not what you think it is it's not your body it's not your name it's not anything that's happened to you anything you're good at any of your skills and this is going to sound very mystical now but it's like anything that you can identify like that like your name or experiences can't be what you are because you're able to identify them so what you essentially are just is and these things that we think we essentially are are just due to you know programming and life experiences and shape us into something that we think is real but essentially it doesn't have any foundation and a way to see that is to look at how two people will interpret events completely differently if an event had any inherent meaning to it surely whoever viewed it would come to the same conclusion but we know that's not how things happen to one person something might be heaven on earth and to another one it might be an absolute nightmare and that's because it's never the thing that happens but it's the way we interpret it and as humans you know we inherently do need something to move towards and bring out the best of us so absolutely continue doing that that's what I'm all about but do that with the understanding that whether you achieve those things or not it doesn't change anything about who you actually are and your inherently worthy nature as a being and the funny thing is about this as well have you ever noticed that you want something so badly and you kind of strive towards it and get it but by the time you actually get to that thing you don't really care about it anymore and then that's when it finally comes and you know there's so many things about today that I'm actually living in my own life that in the past I would have dreamed about but now I'm actually living them it hasn't really changed how I feel by very much you know I just kind of feel yeah this is just like the new normal and it bec we become very accustomed to things very quickly so understand before running on the endless hamster wheel that no amount of achievement is going to really bring what you're looking for and it's something that has to come from within you so I know this video got a little deep guys but the reason I like to think about things in these terms is I just see so much very surface level things going on all the time and although that seems like a very sort of trivial thing, as a society, as a species, we just have the paradigm that we are our experiences and stuff and so long as we keep doing that and keep identifying with things that aren't really who we are, that are constantly changing, then we're always going to be in fear, we're always going to be operating from scarcity and lack and that's why you know when I answer a lot of these questions or make videos on this type of topic it always kind of ends up coming to the same conclusion point because all of the other stuff is again it's just playing with shadows as I said earlier it's like you're just dealing with stuff that's not really the essential cause and I'm more interested in as close to ultimate truth as I can get you know I don't want to just play pretend for five minutes in order to solve a surface level solution only to be in trouble again later I'm not calling for enlightenment or you know like transcendent in the ego by any means but I think it's really important that we understand the function of it and we can sort of put it in its place so it just doesn't rule us and make our life a living hell because that is literally the reason for all the suffering in the world it's just like an overactive ego in many many different forms so I hope you enjoyed this one guys give me a comment and let me know what you thought and I will see you in the next video